And you would think that somewhere in the investigation process, when they discovered the content of the message, somebody would have done something sensible. But no. So, <clears throat> what steganography is not, right? Alice and Bob want to send a message, and Eve, the eavesdropper, is going to listen in, right? So, if Alice sends a message to Bob in code, and Eve hears this, depending upon the security of the code, Eve may or may not be able to crack it. But at the very least, Eve knows that Alice is sending something to Bob that the two of them think needs to be secure. So, you know, I don't know what they're up to, but they're clearly hiding something. What steganography is, is a clear transmission with a hidden message. So, Alice sends the message, the movie last night was great, thanks for inviting me, Eve eavesdrops and decides that unless these are politicians and underage um, friends that uh, this is probably boring, right? And Eve goes to snoop on some other communications. So the game is, hide the message in plain sight. There are, I, I saw one website that said this week that said there are 32 different known methods of steganography, but I think there's actually a nearly unlimited number. Um, so here's a text example. Find the hidden message. Right. Um, actually, if you go and buy a copy, hardback copy of the Da Vinci Code, there is a message using exactly this, where my uppercase letter is replaced by boldface letter um, on the jacket, and the message relates to the plot of the book. So the dust jacket of the Da Vinci Code uses this steganographic method. Um, and almost nobody I know has seen it. You have to tell people it's there. Okay, you, you can't find anything in the tech world without going to Wikipedia, right? So, steganography is the art and science of writing hidden messages in such a way that no one, apart from the sender and intended recipient, suspects the existence of the message. Um, actually, I took that off Wikipedia a while ago. I don't know if that's still what it says on the page. Um, but it's actually a good definition. So, public example. I don't know if any of you are baseball fans, right? But Hayden Siddhartha Finch. Anybody know Sid Finch? Ever hear the story of Sid Finch? He was a Mets prospect in 1986. Um, if you look at his baseball card there, you'll see something interesting. Well, he was an unsigned free agent, but the Mets had him in camp. He was barefoot, and his fastball <coughs> was clocked at 168 miles an hour. Anybody, baseball fans here? Nice. Fastest guy in the major currently throws about 102. Um, ultimately, Sid decided not to play Major League Baseball, which is probably why you haven't heard of him. But Sports Illustrated put him on the cover in 1985. Um, here's the story. He's a part pitcher, part yogi, and part recluse, impressively liberated from our opulent lifestyle since deciding about yoga and his future in baseball. And you can go on and, you know, they're saying the secret can't kept, be kept much longer, questions have been asking, blah, 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 blah. This, you can go and get the Sports Illustrated issue, 1985, April 1, um, and you can find this story, right? I even went and found the cover just to put it in for cute clip art. Um, <clears throat> the uh, caused all sorts of buzz. I can only imagine. I mean, it basically went viral before things before we had an internet that could send things viral. You know, it's only one problem. Try the first letter of every word. Whole story was April Fool's prank. 
Um, Sid Finch is still periodically mentioned in baseball broadcasts. <laughs> Text-based steganography. It's done all the time, and I'll finish with a great example. Um, Image-based steganography. Anybody recognize this? What? It, it's a Hirschfeld drawing. Anybody know what's special about Hirschfeld drawings? He used to draw, he would draw, every week he would draw the drawing on the Sunday New York Times Week in Review. And he always put his daughter's name in there. His daughter's name was Nina. Sometimes he would put more than one Nina in there. In which case there would be a superscript with a two or a three by his signature. After a while, it was decided that this was inappropriate. They, Times basically said, no more. And so he said, OK. And they were inundated with letters from people who were bummed because they couldn't find the secret message in there. More recently, there's actually a battle going on between comic book, excuse me, graphic novel authors and the comic book conventions that say about what, how certain plot elements need to go. And the authors have been fighting back by putting hidden messages into the panels in the graffiti on the walls in the back thing. And comic book aficionados know where to read that. And it was about a five year period where the establishment didn't know. Right? Uh, I'm told that there's a separate one that works with Spider-Man's girlfriend, which I didn't quite follow when my pop culture expert explained it to me yesterday. <laughs> But apparently, they weren't allowed to kill her. He caught her as she fell off the bridge because the, um, you know, Muckety Bucks at DC said she must. And so they put into the word neck, they put the word neck snaps hidden in the background. <coughs> and they didn't catch it, and they published it. And then when the Muckety Bucks wanted to bring her back, they said, You can't, she's dead. And they said, What do you mean? They said, We killed her. I said, No, you didn't. She said, Sure, her neck snapped when he was caught. And they used it to bring it back. And so apparently she's really dead. OK, I'm going to images. Bitwise steganography, right? Images made up of red, green, and blue. You guys presumably all know this. 24-bit um, color is 0 to 255 red, 0 to 255 green, 0 to 255 blue. Um, <clears throat> right, 8 bits to get 0 to 255. Here's the thing. Those of you who are human, you can't tell the difference between 253 and 252, or between 86 and probably 94. Right? I'll convince you of that in a moment. But I'm going to use those extra bits for my purpose. So I'm going to give you a numerical example. This comes with a worksheet. Right? But the idea is, Alice has a big, huge eight-digit number, and Bob has an eight-digit number that he wants to hide. Right? And so we can take the four digits from Alice's and the four digits from Bob. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the four most important digits from Bob, but we're going to put them into the least important part of Alice's number. Now, I've changed Alice's number from 49,283,430 to. 49,287,827. To think of it this way, imagine you had $49 million. <laughs> and imagine that because of investments, you changed and you gained $3,900. Are you likely to care? <laughs> right? You're not going to see the difference. In fact, the difference is less than one-tenth of one percent. And if you do it with this, it's going to average considerably less than that, but it will always be less than one-tenth of one percent, assuming that your leading digit wasn't zero. OK. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for every single pixel in an image. So <coughs> I have here a cute little tool that I built. I'm going to load an image. Image it. Images is an eye. 
This particular image I didn't even do. This is an image that was presented at the Nifty <coughs> Assignments panel, I don't know, five or six years ago, um, by Tom Murtaugh at Williams College. And he hid not one, but he hid four bits. So instead of four digits, it's four bits, right? So he had four bits of something else inside this image. Now, quite frankly, to me, that image looks a little bit natural. Doesn't look like it's been doctored. There's this funny wires crossing in an X pattern, but they're actually really there. Those are cables. Um, those are cables at the, you know, this is a flume ride in the amusement park. Not Disney, but in, right? Um, so I'm going to try to extract four bits. I'm going to look only at the four lower order bits, those bits that we said didn't matter. And that's the picture that's behind there. This picture, an even more exciting ride, um, is hidden behind the picture on the right. And I pulled out the bottom four bits. You know, and Tom put them there. You can go to the website. You can download the one on the right. And when you do, if you look only at the bottom four bits and don't look at the 49 million, you'll get that, which is you know, a pretty detailed image to have hidden behind there. Right? I, I want to claim that you never saw that coming. OK. And I can go. Now, if I try to get more bits, if I try to get six bits out, I'm going to get two bits from the original image and four. And you know what? Doesn't make much sense. You can probably imagine that you're seeing parts of two different things there. You can probably rationalize it and vaguely reconstruct it, because there is information there to give you clues. But you know, that's nothing like what we saw a moment ago. And if you go, what if you tried to get only three bits out? Well, you're getting a hint, but that's not the image. Right? The image is four bits. So you can hide any one picture behind another. By the way, this is what's called least significant bit steganography. Right? So this is the game. Right now, I've got pictures. These some of these pictures are the actual photos I took <coughs> on my AT hike last summer. <coughs> and some of them have been doctored. There's the one on the left and there's the one on the right. One of them is an original photo. The other has been doctored. So, you know, if there's too much information, if the top image is too rich, I took a simpler image down below. Right? Which one's real and which one's doctored? I'm going to say that you have a 50-50 chance of guessing each one because according to the perception expert in my psychology department, you can't tell. Your eye and brain are not good enough. Because this time I hid only one bit. <laughs> All right. But just, oh, I see, I should have actually, here. I can make them bigger for you to be fair. There you go. Does that help? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll try another one. Maybe that was too hard. Here, go ahead. <laughs> what if you started pixel peeping? I'm sorry? What if you started zooming in on individual pixels? What if you start doing it? Zooming in on individual pixels. Won't help you. Because the most I change the color value by is one. Half my color values, on average, aren't changed at all. So if you see a difference there, you're definitely <laughs> fooling yourself. And the others, you know, I don't know. The red here looks like it's got to be fairly fully red. Let's say it's 240. I might have changed it to 239. But having both pictures side by side, once you start examining 240 the 240 and 239, you're not going to tell. No, but you'll be mathematically, with a computer program, you'll be able to start extracting. Ah, ah we'll, we'll come back to that. Hold that thought. <laughs> could you possibly detect it? Uh, you probably could by comparing the images. In fact, all right, you want to play the game? 
We'll go back to the program. I'll clear these. Here I will load AT cover number one. And here I will load AT pure number one. They don't look, but I do actually have a comparison button. And I had to do a lot of pixel comparisons. It says they don't match. You could look at the console window, it would have given them all to you. But I'm going to tell you that there's, um, that took so long. That's a 240 by 240 image. Okay, so that's about 6, 60,000 pixels. And I had to print 30,000 lines because about half of them are different. That's why that was that pause. We could look at the console. Just so that you can see it does work, I'll put, actually let me be faster if I put the pure back on the left. Now if I compare. And it didn't have to print anything that time so the dialogue came up much faster. So absolutely, you're absolutely right. If you do, but here's the thing. You have to have that only works if you have both. If you only have one, we'll come back to that, right? If we only have one, is there any way you can detect that I've done something to it? And the answer, the short answer is it depends what I've done. Okay. So I think we can safely agree that by eye, you can't tell which one's been doctored. If I give you only one, we're coming back to that. Just to be fair, the code to do the hiding I'm assuming that you've been past a parameter of the number of bits to hide. We Shift is 2 to the power of bits to hide. Mask is 2 to the 8 minus that power. right? And then you take the cover array divided by Shift times Shift. That basically wipes out the bottom. And you add the secret array divided by mask. Right? And the rest of it's just the standard doubling nested for loop. The code to extract, division factor is 2 to the bits to extract, and you mod by division factor, and then you multiply to bring it over to the most significant bits. So here's the deal. The more you hide, the more information you'll be able to get back. On the other hand, the more you hide, the more obvious it's going to be that you hit something. So there are 8 bits to share. Right? Compromise would say keep four, hide four. You could choose to keep two and hide six. So let's look at that, right? Hide too few, and the restored image looks blotchy. Hide too many, and the doctoring is clear. So I've got a series of nine slides coming. They all look like this. In all cases, the top is the pure image on top, the top left. The top right is what I want, what I want to hide. If I hide zero bits, well, that means I didn't hide anything. The top image doesn't change. And if I try to get back what was hidden then, I got a big fat nothing, so I got a block of black. <laughs> hide one bit. Well, what I got back changed. It's still pretty blotchy. Um, but I'm going to claim you can't detect the difference. Now, as the number goes up, Watch the image in the lower right get better. After a while, it will seem to get really good, but then you'll start to see the image in the lower left get worse. Three, four. I can start to see issues in the sky on the left. I'm not noticing any improvement on the right anymore. Now I can almost see the silhouette. In fact, I can see a little more than the silhouette. I can even almost see that the silhouette is wearing blue. No way I'm buying that as an original image anymore. And of course, if you hide eight bits, there was nothing to cover it with. And so now, in fact, in this case, all three of the um, those pictures are identical. And would how obvious would it be if the pictures were kind of similar in their color distributions in the various areas, right? You'd be able to theoretically... Right, so, so, so the, more that's, the more that's different, 
the more obvious it is, but that's not going to matter to me in a moment. Because I want to do this, right? So I want a separate digression. And then I'm going to stitch the digression back in. You can also play cute image games. So, <clears throat> oh, first of all, let me go to my program for a moment. And let me take one of my pure pictures. Uh, let, me, let me take one that's got a little more something in it. Oh, jeez. I keep picking ones that are just brown and white. All right. And now I'll just try to extract bits. If I try to extract four bits from this, if I try to extract one bit from this, you know, it's just, right? So. If you, if you try to extract something from the image, you're going to get something that looks like random noise. Just something to keep in mind. Because now I'm going to hide random data. I'm going to take a major image, and I'm going to take an original image, and I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to create a random pixel array of the exact same size. Fill it randomly with color. And that will be my first, I'm, I'm doing a split. And that's my first 50% is random. My second 50% is that I will exclusive or the first 50% um, with the original image. And if I do this, when I come back, I can put it together. So, all right, so I call this the informational nucleic acid. <coughs> So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to load a picture. Oh, this is good. Timing's everything. <laughs> oh, damn, he came back. Leave for a second. And I'm going to split this. And the first half, half is randomly chosen, <laughs> and the second half is the result of exclusive oring it. Um, basically doing a bitwise not equal. Now, what I can do is I already saved the answers here. So I'm going to load part one. Right, that looks like what we just saw for part one. Actually, it's totally different, but you can't tell. <laughs> it's random. Right? And I load up part two. Because this is where I said I did the cookie channel thing. I already saved them. And, I'll, and I'm going to put them back together. And so now I'm going to hide those random things. So if you think I hit something and you pull it out, you get this random thing. Now I have to give you two, it, two things to pull out of. You pull out of both halves. Of course, it gets even better. I can put a different random one in there. And then I'll XOR that. And we get something completely different. Right? And how did I get this other two? I XORed the first random piece with the picture of Barb and that, right? Because if you XOR twice, you get back the original. And I can go one more time. Right? So that kind of says that Barb and Carl share 50% of their information <laughs> on the nucleic acid. They also share 50%. Right? And for that matter, they share 50% with every other image that I ever want to do. This has an interesting consequence. It means that any random pixel array is 50% of any picture. Are we about to move? We're going to have to move in about five minutes or so. Okay. So um, do we have a place to move right. to? Uh, technically, we have 338. But we'd have to boot them out. Well, they should be done in about five minutes upstairs. So. Okay. Yeah. So I'm now going to use this. Right? This is one of many protocols used to transmit partial images 
you know, this is a cryptographic protocol. This is a very simple version of it. There are versions where you can recover the original from any two out of three or three out of five, but that's a whole different cryptographic game. And it's so, not just limited to pictures, right? We could hide words and things like that, as long oh, as we can encode. We'll get there, we'll get there, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oops. So code to randomize, build with a random thing. And my whole point of showing the code here is to show every time it's basically a single assignment. Code to exclusive or, right? The XOR operation, right? So now we play slice and dice. I'm going to take one image. Oh, I don't know. Here's the problem. If I hide that random image, I lose information when I get it back because I lost the bottom four bits if I hit four bits. I don't want to lose any information. So I'm going to slice this image. I'm going to slice an image into eight parts. And one bit is going to go to image H, another bit's going to go to image G, and so on. I guess I did my alphabet backwards. Um, that, com that, that comes from doing it one way, flipping the, uh, flipping the graphic, because I didn't want to build the graphic twice. And, right? But I can do this, and I can do the inverse. I can take eight images and merge them. And once again, there's the code to slice. Right? Uh, and I didn't give you the code to merge. So here's my new game. I will split my image into two random parts. These are random noise. I will then split each random part into eight things. And these become eight random, right, eight pieces of random bits. I will then one by one hide the images behind 16 original photos. Every one of those photos will have a color value that's off by no more than one. So it will be imperceptible to the human eye. I will then put my 16 photos up on Flickr. And all my friends can get the 17th by basically right, doing the following. We are here. Clear these. Uh, go to the 16th, extract one bit, save. Go to the 15th, extract one bit, save. Right? So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to go to merge. Oops. I must have a separate change user. And I will take the first eight pieces and I merge them and I get this. And I will save this. And then I will go to merge. And I will take my second eight pieces. And I will get that. And then I will take my two pieces. I definitely have two separate J file choosers here. First, second, I hit I split Carl sixteen ways. <laughs> I hit him behind sixteen images. And uh, presto, there he is. So, uh, I, I, I got like four more slides. So, you want to go? Or... Um, no, I think we can finish then. What? Go, finish? Yeah, yeah finish. Okay, so you want to hide text? I turn the text into a picture for this game, right? Every letter takes up one byte, assuming 8 bit ASCII. So, if I have T H E, the T goes into the red channel. The H goes into the green channel. The E goes into a blue channel. Next pixel gets the space. Um, the B and the I for the big red dog. Next pixel gets the G, the space, and the R. Right? Turn the text into a picture. Hide the picture with whatever degree of security you want. Transmit the doctored image or images. Person extracts the, pic extracts the pictures, then breaks the picture back into the text. 
right? 